Welcome to the ADF Insider Essential Series, which demonstrates the essential skills, tips, tricks and techniques that you will require for building ADF applications. In this demonstration you will see how you access the ADF binding layer from Java in a managed bean. My name is Frank Nymphius and I'm from the Oracle JDF product management team. Every UI component you see on a web page is bound to a binding file, called the page definition file or the binding container. At design time, the bindings are represented in metadata. At runtime, they are represented by Java objects that can be accessed from a managed bean in Java. At runtime, a binding container is represented by the binding container interface class or the DC binding container implementation class. Iterators are represented by the DC iterator binding, attributes and their values by the attribute binding, tables and trees are bound to the JU control hierarchical binding, lists are bound to JU control list binding, and actions and methods are bound to operation bindings. So these commonly used binding objects can be used in your application development to access the binding layer and to execute operations on it. But how do you access the binding layer from Java? This is what this little session is about. This is the example I want to use to explain how to call the binding layer from Java. We see a form with employee data and then a table listing all employee data. What I want to do is I want to create a new employee. So now what I want to do is that when I press the submit button that two things happen. First of all the new record should be committed to the database and second, with the same button press, I want to re-query the table to show me all the employees that actually work in the IT department. And here it is. So I commit the data and I re-query the data that is available for this department and you see my name listed there. So let's see how we build this. This is the, the form that we've seen at runtime and this is the form that I use to enter a new employee and this is the button I want to equip with two functionality with the commit functionality and to refresh the table in requerying the employees and the requery of the employees is handled by an execute with params so I created a view criteria on the employee view object and this view criteria is what I will populate with a bind variable and then execute. So first of all we start dragging and dropping the commit operation because that's one of the functionalities that we want to have onto the submit button. I want to keep the name submit and I want this button to always be enabled. So this configures the action listener of this command button to point to the binding layer. The next step is I need to create the execute with params binding reference which I do from the binding section. Um, keep it with action because this is what it is, an action. And here I select all employees, execute with params. I don't need to bother with the argument here because this is what we programmatically include at runtime. So this part is done. The next step now is to create a managed bean that executes the button. So if I double click on this button then Oracle JDeveloper helps to create the skeleton or the start of the managed bean. So let's call it employees bean and have it generating the class as it doesn't exist. So this now is on commit so we know what it's doing and I ask it to generate the ADF binding code for the commit operation. Remember that the commit operation already is referenced from the action listener in the binding layer, so we want to keep that functionality and have the system generating the source code for that. So here what we already see is we have access to the binding layer and this access to the binding layer is through the binding context which we see here, get current, get current binding entry. This always points you to the current active binding container and you can use that in your own code as well. And then what it does is it accesses the commit definition in the binding layer to execute the commit operation. So we extend now this functionality because what we wanted to do 
<coughs> so first of all we want it to access the department ID then we want it to access and execute execute with params and then eventually we want refresh the table so that it shows the detail so to access the department ID what we can do is if we have a look at the page again and especially in the binding section we we'll see that for the department ID there's already an attribute binding available it's called department ID so we want to keep that information so I'm copying it to the clipboard and access it from Java so we use the bindings reference here so it's an attribute binding that we use and that's department ID and this attribute binding we get from the binding reference get so here I copied the wrong information from the clipboard just put that in here instead so this is our access to the department ID so the new employees department that I assigned the employee to so the next step is I want to access the execute with params and as this is an operation binding as this one I can just copy the whole block of code copy it here and just rename the duplicate so just to name it to operation binding 2 in reality you will choose better names than that so object result just in case the method returns information to me like true false or whatever the method returns now what I need to do is before executing the method is I want to pass in the department value as an argument to the execute with params so first let's have an access to the execute with params so we created the execute with params in the binding layer here so we can get the ID of the binding just in case you want to rename that we get it from here and change the commit operation of our copy to use execute with params so next step is that we need to pass in the argument and again the argument expected by the execute with params operation is depth ID variable which is defined as the bind variable in ADF business components so what we do is we call operation binding to and now it's get parameter map and now put the name of the argument and then the value and the value is department ID get input value so this gives us the correct type of the argument and then after this we execute the method which means that the bind variable is populated the view object is re-executed and the binding layer is refreshed so the last thing we need to do is to display this in the table itself and for this we go to the design time select the table here's my table and on the table we do have a property called binding this is not the ADF binding it's the component binding and the component binding helps us to get a handle to the table in our Java class so we choose edit then we choose our managed bean and then call it the employees table 
And this creates a setter and a getter method for the table in the manage B. So last step is to refresh the table and here's our table variable. And here we use the ADF faces context. ADF faces context get waiting for the import get current instance and then add partial target and just pass the reference of the table in. So now what happens when we press the submit button first of all the form is committed it's the first operation that it's doing and it's accessing the operation binding that is configured in the binding container which is a page definition file. So then we chose the same binding reference to get access to the attribute binding representing the department ID in the form. We stored this in a variable of type attribute binding to then create a second operation binding to point to the execute with params operation. And here, as an argument, we passed in the department value, which is the attribute binding get input value, and executed this operation, after which the view object for the employees is re-executed. And to surface this, in the table, we just added a partial target and refreshed the table. To learn more about Oracle, JDeveloper and ADF, visit the Oracle JDevPub website on OTN, which is oracle.com slash technology slash JDev. You find a lot of downloads there, tutorials, discussion forum access and samples, as well as the developer guides to get you started and continue going with Oracle ADF.